on with more of how you and I can fight climate change right here at home. Now, we've talked about ways to save energy. Now we're gonna get a little more personal, but not that personal. There's a ton of things that we can do at home. So I'm gonna break it up and fly through it in sections. So buckle up, here we go. The first and best thing to do is to calculate your household's carbon footprint. I mean, you gotta know where you're starting from, right? Try UC Berkeley's Cool Climate Calculator to get you started. All right, now that we've got that done, on the home front, there's several things that we can do. Now we can choose to buy an old home to renovate instead of new construction. And renovation or not, design spaces around the natural light that's available, especially a home office, and choose light colored walls to reflect what natural light you already have. You can also repurpose and upcycle old furniture. If you need something new, choose reclaimed or sustainably harvested wood or materials. Now I gotta toss in recycled plastic furniture here. It's great for the outdoors and there has to be a market for all the materials we've already made. Be a Scrooge on how much water you use. A rain catchment barrel is awesome, especially if you have plants to water. Add a couple of goldfish to keep the mosquitoes down. It's a good tip. A smart water monitor is also a great idea. It'll keep track of how much you use, let you know if you've got a leak, and allow you to turn the water off remotely with your phone. How cool is that? And like every other machine, keep your HVAC filters clean. Now, the biggest thing you can do outside is to shrink your lawn. I know, I know, everyone loves their grass but grass is the most widely grown crop we have. 42 million acres worth, according to Curb.com. That doesn't even feed us. You also gotta remember that those pretty lawns need tons of extra water, gas-powered equipment, and fertilizers, all of which contribute to climate change. So try replacing that grass with native, drought-tolerant plants to beautify your yard and keep your bills low. All right, let's head inside for just a few minutes. I just want to add a couple of things to saving energy on the electronics that you use. For instance, download instead of stream your shows and movies. Why? Downloading uses energy for the time of the file download. Streaming uses energy for the whole show. Limit the total number of devices you use. No person needs a half a dozen electronic devices. And simply clean up your email inbox. I'm guilty, I'm gonna have to work on that one. And use a green search engine like Ecosia. This is a new one for me, but I can't wait to try it. We can also do lots to optimize our food choices and shift them to climate smart eating habits. Shop local so your food doesn't have to travel so far and you support your local communities and neighbors. Shop fresh. It's better for your health, saves the resources it takes to freeze or process and package everything. Eat organic. It doesn't use harmful chemicals that will travel everywhere. Eat less meat. And I know you've heard this one before. I do eat meat, but at least once a week, planned or unplanned, we'll have a meatless meal with another protein source like beans and rice. This is a big one. So if everyone in the U.S. ate one meatless and cheeseless meal a week, it would be equivalent to removing 7.6 million cars from the road. Wow, quite an impact. Give up the bottled water. Trade it for a filtration system and a reusable water bottle. If you can, grow your own food. This has so many benefits, not only for your physical and mental health, but also for the health of the planet. Start composting at home. It not only recycles organic waste, but you can also feed your garden. Now, if you can't farm at home, join a CSA or community supported agriculture group and support local farmers, businesses, and the planet by getting your food directly from the farm near you. Recycling is also still part of any solution. So you should be familiar with your area's recycling options but it also needs to be clear that this is a last resort solution. I grew up thinking the recycle factor made buying stuff, even bad stuff, okay. The truth is most recycling is a lie, 
Like only 9% of the plastic to be recycled actually gets recycled. It simply doesn't happen or it's sold and badly mismanaged, which means it's ending up in places that it shouldn't be, like our ocean. All right, a couple of quick things on the personal front and we'll wrap it up for today. There are ways to offset your personal carbon footprint if all the changes you'd like to make aren't possible, and sometimes they're not. You can ask utilities about options to buy green energy. You can purchase carbon offsets like companies do. You can also support or join tree planting groups. Believe it or not, there are financial changes that you can make, which surprised me at first. You can choose a climate positive bank. A what? It's a bank that doesn't support fossil fuel companies and does what they can to be green in their business practices. Just Google it. You can also disinvest from carbon heavy industries and investments. Remember, no support, no company. Now, out of everything we've gone over today, this last one is the most important. And it is educate yourself, which is what you're doing right now. Kudos. Start from the beginning by learning the climate change basics. The Climate Reality Project is a great resource, but you can also watch the first four episodes of Ocean Core's Climate Crisis Story, or you can even rewatch movies like Al Gore's An Inconvenient Truth, or Wally for the family. If you're a reader, read about climate change in books, credible news articles, I happen to like The Guardian, newsletters, and Curb.com suggests The Nearly Now, or even blogs. And they also suggest following female environmental journalists, which I don't hate, and supporting publications that are reporting on climate change, like The Guardian. Help keep them going. Then keep up with it, because the situation is constantly changing. Listen to credible climate change podcasts, Curb.com suggested what called Warm Regards. And keep reading. Be aware of the climate impacts affecting your area. In Hawaii, sea level rise is a big one, but in big cities, air pollution might be a big one. So it could be a good idea to map your local air pollution. Finally, and most importantly, get your kids involved and learning. It's so important for their future. Include them in your learning as much as possible. Include them in all the changes you make around home and anywhere else to fight climate change. Tell them why these changes are important and how the changes will help. Make it a hopeful learning kind of experience and give them resources designed for them. Curve.com had a couple of book suggestions, 10 things I can do to help my world and George saves the world by lunchtime. Sounds like fun. Now, if you happen to have or know of one of those little reading libraries, share the knowledge and add some climate change books to it. NASA's Climate Kids is also a really great learning resource. But lastly, visit our national parks. Let them see for themselves what's wonderful and worth saving and what's changing. All right, everyone, that's enough for now. Give yourself props for everything that you already do and see if you can add just one more climate change action to your routine. Thanks for diving in. Hit that subscribe button before you leave, share what you've learned here forward, and I'll see you next time.